Hello, everybody. Welcome to Startup Jungle. I'm your host, Lo Silva. And today with me, I have Matt Wheeler. He is the co founder of Drift Rock. Matt, what's going on? Hey, guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us on. So, Matt's going to actually be doing something pretty cool. He's actually going to walk us through um, one of the apps that Drift Rock has. Uh, before we do that, I kind of want to get to know Matt a little bit and talk a little bit more about Drift Rock and specifically um, this uh, Twitter card uh, marketing that basically we are going to be teaching you guys right now. So Matt, tell me a little bit about how you got started. Cool, yeah. So, so I've been in digital marketing a long time. Um, my first campaign I kicked off when I was when I was 14, just doing <laughs> some like uh, some uh, some SEO stuff for my for my mum's fancy dress uh, business, um, and that kind of got me into into entrepreneurship. And and you know, so I was a I was a 14 year old kid making money in my bedroom. So I thought uh, this is a pretty cool lifestyle. So um, so uh, when I graduated from from uni, I, I went went into um, into a company doing a lot of kind of kind of internet internet marketing stuff, I got a chance to play around with um, with sending a lot of traffic from Google AdWords through to, to various um, affiliate programs back when it used to be uh, kind of open and, and a lot of uh, a lot of fun, um, and then you know got a chance you know, if you if you're doing a lot you know if you were sending tons of traffic through to these different sites, so we um, what we want to do is kind of you know, rather just send it through to other sites, actually start building up our own portfolio companies and, and doing it ourselves. Um, so, so yeah, I got a chance to start some start a mobile comparison site, which um, which went okay, and then uh, and then you know, later started helping other other startups as well with their marketing stuff. Uh, you know, fast forward today, and, and Driftrock is kind of the uh, the kind of end result of that. So we're building building a set of tools that that are designed to to help companies get a better better return, make more money from their social ads. And um, so building tools for Twitter, for Facebook, and that kind of stuff. And one of the tools is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lead response, which is based on uh, generating leads through Twitter cards, correct? Yeah. So yeah. So, um, so Twitter's got an awesome product called um, called Lead Cards. Um, being a performance marketer is my favorite my favorite type of ad product with Twitter. Um, it's, it's Twitter's kind of first uh, foray into doing um, to doing direct response um, advertising. So so with a click on a button on Twitter, you can send through a lead straight through to the advertiser an email address that they signed up to with Twitter, uh, which is like a immensely powerful advertising. If you um, you know for for B two B lead gen for coupon codes for whatever it might be. Um, so what we try to do with lead responses is, is um, make the most of those leads, so rather than just kind of collect them in some CSV to use later within you know in a, in a few days or something. Uh, lead response is all about utilizing those leads in real time. So the leads get sent straight from Twitter to lead response, where we'll then fire back the um, the leads to um, that's the emails to back those users, or send them off to sales teams, or whatever it might be. But the end result is that we're trying to be a bit more creative with those campaigns, do more do for Few more things uh, and and uh, convert more leads, basically. Cool. So I'll kind of uh, let you take over because I know you have some stuff to show us with a uh, screen share. So um, it's all yours. Cool. Thanks, Louis. Um, sweet. Yeah. So I guess um, yeah, a good place to start. Um, uh, I'm not sure you know. I'm sure, you guys have uh, familiar with kind of basic Twitter stuff, uh, Twitter ads. But I thought I'd run through the run through a few foundation stuff just to kind of set the um, set the the groundwork for uh, for lead, lead cards, which is a uh, a bit more technical, but um, but more more, uh, more powerful. Um, so yeah, so jumping into um, to Twitter, um, let's just fire that up. Cool. So, so yeah, just um, so you've seen all, all familiar with the uh, with the interface. Um, just a few kind of uh, so the ad, the ads you can you can run is kind of a mix of different ad formats. It's not as crazy uh, crazy variations as Facebook. Um, there's a few different things, but um, so you've got promoted accounts which will show up here or potentially in the timeline. Um, so in the timeline, um, you can show promoted tweets, which is this. Strategy is really quite similar to, to Facebook in that you know you, you've got you've basically got a chance to um, target people by uh, what they're interested in is really powerful on Twitter uh, with a piece of content that you think is valuable to them. Uh, it's like the start of a conversation. So um, 
So this is a promoted tweet here, um, and you can you, obviously that, that tweet can contain any kind of any kind of content or images or links to links to more content. Um, and uh, in the case of Twitter lead cards, it's actually extended that tweet. Um, so um, so those are kind of different different ad formats, and, and targeting those you can target all sorts of different um, uh, users by different interest targets. So um, you know one really basic example is we could target um, uh, uh, users of, of Startup Jungle. Um, uh, so any, anyone who follows Startup Jungle or, um, or, or who is similar to people who are start uh, following Startup Jungle, we can target them with promoted tweets. Um, or um, you can target, target users by uh, keywords they're mentioning in tweets. So if anyone mentions the word growth hacking in a tweet, then we can, we can share a promoted tweet to those, those users as well. So there's a, there's a load of options, and like the you know the interest interest targeting side of, of, of Twitter ads is, is incredibly powerful. It's um, you know, people are on Twitter to consume content, and they're they're following they're following things they're interested in. So so no one's that surprised when you give them something something that's really valuable, like a piece of content they can they can uh, get into. So real quick, is the the bigger goal using this to create native ads and draw people into our marketing strategies and get to know us a little bit more or take them to an email or take them directly to an offer? What do you think is best? So I think it, it's, it kind of depends on the, the objective you, you've got for your, for your business, but I mean, it's, um, you can get quite creative and do, and do a whole lot of different things. You know, we've done campaign sending you know, direct from, from a tweet with a URL straight through to um, some either, either a landing page uh, to, to buy something. Uh, so literally direct response advertising, and, and we've got campaigns like that profitable and they work. Uh, we've also tried campaigns where we're doing you know, through to content blog articles, which then you know we're building some uh, relationship with a, with a, as a brand, and then and then lead cards. You know you're generating um, you're generating leads, which you can then convert uh, data later down the line with your your email email automation and email marketing. So there's a whole range, but um, you know I think what start, Twitter Twitter has kind of started out with this. Um, it was you know mainly about brand building um, and that kind of stuff, and and the ad products they've been releasing more recently have been have been really good for for direct response and performance marketing. Um, so you know, if you have a you know, if your goal is a if you're a B2B B2B company trying to generate generate leads uh, for your sales pipeline, then Twitter's great for that. Uh, or if you if you want to send through to a site with a conversion, it's great for that now as well. Nice. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I'll jump into. Uh, the ads platform give you guys a tour if you haven't seen it already. <coughs> so it's a drift rock, so um, it's a, not a lot, not a lot going on there today. So that's per pretty perfect for what we're going to show. So this is Twist ads interface. You've got multiple campaigns, and within each campaign, you've then got tweets. Um, Similar to like an AdWords or Facebook account structure. Um, Twitter charges um, charges advertisers based on a cost per engagement. So um, so if you uh, so if we were to um, click on a tweet, uh, on, a, on a link of a tweet, or whether we were to click it and open it, or reply, or um, retweet that tweet, or favorite it, then that's an engagement, and, we, and Twitter will charge us a cost per engagement for that. Um, as a marketer, you're not necessarily optimizing for cost per engagement, you're optimizing for something that you, that you care about, so it might be a lead, or it might be a click through to your website or a sale. Um, so you know the the cost per the engagements are kind of useful to see how well that tweet's doing or how well that campaign's doing. But you should always be kind of optimizing for the thing you care about, so the actual conversion itself. Um, but we've got kind of um, uh, we've got um, clicks here, which mean a click on anything. It's not necessarily a click on your link. Um, so it's really important to kind of bear that in mind. Retweets, replies, follows, and lead lead gen cards. Uh, so leads from lead, lead cards we're going to go through. Um, so one one kind of really quick tip, tip before I get into lead cards is um, make sure you know because you're optimizing for the thing you care about whether that's someone can to your website remove all the other kind of um, possible engagements from that tweet that might mean that the user is um, interacting with the, with the tweet in, in the way that, that you're going to get charged for something but not not necessarily going to get you the value so you know if you put a um, a tweet out there with a hashtag marketing people might click on that hashtag to to uh, to go through to, to look at more marketing tweets and not necessarily engage with your, your content. Um, so that's, a, that's kind of a really quick tip before we get into that. So in lead cards, we'd make sure that we're just focusing everyone on the lead, leads that can get those, those cards through. Got it. Cool. Um, so yeah, so, so, so Twitter lead cards look a bit like 
like this. That's one one. So we've we've actually pinned one to our profile on Jiflock. Um, so there's a kind of like really obvious obvious use for lead cards, which is um, so this is a this is a lead card. It's an extension of the 140 character tweet. So here's a, we've got an additional bit of copy, an image, and a massive call to action which we can click on. So this um, this call to action then sends the email address which is uh, which I signed up to Twitter with and sends an email to that. Uh, sends that email to the advertiser, which is us in this case. Um, so, so basically, um, it's an extension of that, of, that, of, that, of that tweet and allows people to send you a lead directly from Twitter without ever having to leave it. So it kind of reduces the, the length of the funnel, which is really cool. Um, and so yeah, so we're gonna so you can do that for kind of traditional kind of newsletter description, an obvious one. But what what we've kind of built with lead response is the ability to then send an email back to those users in real time. So if someone clicks on this lead, um, this link here, and what's going to happen is uh, my email address has now been sent off to to uh, to lead response, and lead response is now going to send me back an email with this ebook in that I can I can download and use. Um, so suddenly when you've got this auto response set up, you've got you can get way more creative with what you can do with a lead card. So, yeah. um, so in this case, we're sending an ebook, but you could send a coupon code, or you could um, send a, send back something saying like, one of our sales team will be in touch shortly. But it's it's a way of kind of you know if, if someone if someone said said hey in the street, and uh, it's, it's a way of saying saying hey back basically. Um, so continuing that conversation um, as quick as possible. And the longer you leave that response, then the the, the less likely that lead is to convert. So you don't have to actually put in your email because you're already connected to Twitter. It understands that, and when you're clicking, it grabs the email from Twitter. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, so the email address that you've got on record with Twitter is that. So, as someone clicks that button, that's the email address that gets sent through um, to to the advertiser. So, you know, it's really low touch. It's really easy for the user to send that lead through. So, it's uh, you know, you're more likely to get those conversions. Yeah, that's that's. Really big. That, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Done. And so yes, and it's pretty. Um, so it's it's kind of there's a few steps to set them up, but they're um, you know, once once you get going, it's, it's it's really powerful. So you know, I can walk through walk through how how we approach it. Um, so kind of I think the the more, the more exciting stuff is when you're sending um, sending uh, auto response emails. So I'll kind of demo it with with lead response. Um, you can use any email automation system, but it's um, they're not really they're not often not built for Twitter. So um, so this is kind of uh, our approach to making it much simpler and much more powerful. Um, so I kind of demo demo that stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah. So what we, the first thing we want to do is um, is uh, set up a, an endpoint for for sending those leads to. Um, and um, uh, we're going to do that with lead response. So let's just fire up Jifrock. Um, so Jifrock's one of the apps on. Uh, sorry, lead response is one of the apps on Jifrock. And um, uh, so once you've kind of installed it, you can just start using it. Um, and the whole idea is that it's a really simple kind of wizard-based approach. Um, so, so what we're going to do now is going to create a, a destination for all these leads to go through in real time. And if you do, if you were to create it without um, without an endpoint like this, then uh, it's fine. You can still get the leads, but it, you know you get a, you basically get to download a CSV three hours later, which is which is okay. But by that point, you know you've probably lost the conversion, and you also don't get a chance to do some really cool creative campaigns that we'll show you with, show you can create now. Yeah, definitely the the best thing. One of the best things about this, I think, is being able to connect someone immediately. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Um, I mean, we we tried it. You know, we started doing lead cards when they first came out, and um, the reason we built lead response in the first place is we just weren't getting the results we wanted from from the lead cards. Um, I think as soon as you start responding to people in real time, your conversion rates just go through the roof. So um, so we'll go through that now. Um, so yeah, so simple wizard based approach. Um, so I don't know. We can we can set up some campaign. Um, I thought we'd actually do. We've got a we've got a fifty dollar voucher for, for for Twitter ad credit um, that some of you guys might want to get your hands on. So we're going to create a campaign for that, um, which we can give away. So the idea is that the idea of this campaign, the strategy is we're going to create um, a lead card where people can click it on Twitter, and we'll send them a a, a coupon code for fifty dollars in ads and in ad credit for Twitter, so they can use it for the campaigns, um, and hopefully we can get some signups to lead response as well. Yeah, with that with that campaign, so um, so we call it the fifty dollar campaign. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of email response stuff. So you can take you know choose a, a kind of template style. 
Um, so we're going to just click on a coupon code. So the idea is really quickly to create a really, you know, an, an auto-response email that's going to respond to people. So subject line, you know, um, here's uh, the voucher. Um, and you can obviously you want to test something and make it a bit more creative than that. Um, and we're going to do something like contact at Driftrock is where it's going to come from. And the reply to your name. You can tag with UTM if you've got any links in there for extra tracking and stuff. Um, and so what it creates is an email that looks a bit like this. Um, you can add a, an ad, add a cool kind of image header as well. Um, so you might want to put in some, some kind of branding elements as well. Or you can actually just go straight HTML and do something cool with it. Um, but I found like the most simple, most simple emails work the best. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that with the screen share, what just popped up, actually. Uh, the axis? Uh, yeah, so we've got. A, I just uh, clicked a preview. So if you click on the preview button, you get get a, get to see the email. But it looks a bit like this. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, yeah. So we've got. We can add our coupon code in here. So I don't know, uh, 50, Twitter. That would be the coupon code, and then you can click redeem. That will be a, a link or something that then sends through to to a landing page. And in this case, we'll actually just we'll actually uh, kind of tailor the email and send the, send the coupon code right through to you guys. But but um, but that's the kind of uh, kind of approach. How do you want to set it up? So you don't need to be inside the Twitter platform. You can do it inside Driftrock, correct? Yeah. So the first part of this we can do inside Driftrock. So we can create uh, we create the endpoint in Driftrock first. So um, before we can before we can create the cards on Twitter, we need to create um, to where we're going to send these cards and what's going to happen to uh, when we send these leads and what's going to happen to those leads. Um, so this is the first first part of that. So um, so what what's going to happen now is we'll go through. We've now got the, uh, the the email set up. You can also send a a email if people don't open that email um, that comes through in three days. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now, but you can set up, set up another template. Um, and if you want to, you can send an email to your sales team as well. So we could do sales at Driftrock or something like that, so that our sales team uh, get those get these leads in real time as well. Um, and then we're done. Um, so what that gives you is this endpoint URL, which we can then uh, use when we create the campaigns in Twitter to send those leads to. Um, so yeah, so just cut, you just kind of copy and paste that that URL, and then head back to Twitter to to start generating those leads. Um, so we're going to fire up um, fire up ads again. Um, so yeah, so we um, so the way the way lead cards works on Twitter is um, the uh, you can attach a, a lead card um, to to the tweet, to a promoted tweet. So you do a normal promoted tweet campaign, but you'd attach that lead card to it. So we're going to go into uh, into cards here, and um, so these are some cards we did earlier. But um, so we're going to create create a new one. Um, so the short description is these. This is what goes along along the top of the uh, the lead card. So I don't know. Click here for fifty dollars. Add credit, something like that. Some a nice call to action that's going to get people to to engage with that that content, um, and you, and you can you can play around with that. You can create multiple cards. You can test different variations and see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, you can see what the cost per lead was for each different variation of your different cards. Um, but that's a kind of another piece of uh, content you can play around with. Nice. Um, and then we're kind of uploading an image, so we're going to go for this. We create um, the images have to be, you know, these dimensions, four to one aspect ratio, and stuff like that. But they're pretty, pretty simple to set up. So, so this is a, you know another opportunity to, to to add some 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 creative content. So in this case, we've kind of done this kind of voucher code design. Um, I think we just used iStock Photo and just um, kind of tweaked it, played around with that a little bit, or Shutterstock or something like that. Um, and then. Uh, Coupon, and then and then that's kind of the uh, the call to action that's going to go on this on this button here. And this really important what goes on this button is going to be you know it's like any any kind of uh, element on your website. Uh, you can play around with, with that button, and you know the different different uh, different different copy here is going to massively affect your conversion rate to to leads. Um, so try a few different variations with a few different cards. Um, so I think so we need a we need a privacy policy for. Um, for Twitter to uh, for, for the kind of uh, the legal side of things, with the sending leads across. Um, so you just need to add some uh, drink rock. That's not that's not uh, what we're going for. So we want drift rock. Um, so we're going we're going to do 
if we had a privacy policy maybe on that URL, that's what we'd add. Um, the card, the card fallback URL is so if, if someone's on um, on uh, desktop or um, and the and the, and the uh, or if they haven't logged into Twitter, where do they get sent to? Um, so what's what's quite useful about that is maybe sending through to an alternative landing page for for stuff. It's not I wouldn't worry about that too much, but um, you know right that right that's kind of a kind of edge case. But if someone sees that Twitter lead card on Twitter without being logged into Twitter and they can't send their 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 um uh, their lead across, then this is a kind of fallback option. Okay. Um, and then we get on to the, I mean, it, it's so the kind of more um, more complicated side of this is the the data settings, but this is where we get the real power from the from the Twitter lead cards. So that um, that URL that we um, that we worked on earlier, uh, which we copied and pasted in, this uh, lead response endpoint, we're just going to copy and paste it into the submit URL um, form from here. Um, so. Uh, I mean, there's no there's no more setup than that. There's no more complicated kind of uh, things to, to things to do. It's just chuck that chuck that URL in. It doesn't matter whether you do get or post. Um, uh, and then basically that's so as those leads come in in real time, they'll get sent through to this URL, um, and uh, awesome awesome stuff's going to happen on the lead response side. So that email that we set up as a template earlier is going to get fired back to the user um, as they as they submit that their lead tree. That's pretty impressive. I mean, just just the fact that you can you can do that, and then let's talk a little bit about um, what do you suggest as far as people kind of getting started with with Twitter and uh, Twitter cards. How, how what would be the best initial campaign to start running? So I think it's again it's got to come back to your objectives. So um, you know, for for Drift Rock, we we use lead cards for a number of different things. Um, the first thing we tried was uh, giving away some content marketing for free. So so we were you know we're a B two B a B two B company. We're trying to we're trying to attract marketers to come on and use our tools. Um, so we put together a free guide um, for for people to use. Um, and, uh, and 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 so people will click that button, they get the ebook free through free. That's great brand awareness, and it's an easy low touch campaign to to create. Um, but you know if you're if you're if you're a company with um, maybe some maybe an e-commerce company or something like that where you've got a clear transaction, um, then maybe you want to try a coupon campaign. Um, you know, click here to get ten percent off your off your first purchase or something like that. It's a real call to action drives drives those sales through. Um, and it's and it's a cool thing to get onto it. You know, it's a it's a reward. It's not like a it's not a painful experience to get a free you know a coupon or something. And it's quite it's quite it's quite it's quite different. Um, and then if you know if you're a B two uh, you know the other thing we use we use uh, lead cards for on Driftrock is is that kind of B two B sales stuff. So you know if someone we could we could put a, a tweet out saying you know click here to get some help with your with your, your Twitter lead card campaigns um, and talk to one of our sales team. They click on the lead and it gets sent to our sales team. We can follow up and close that close that sale. I love the immediacy of it. Just just how fast someone you know connects and then it immediately goes to your sales team. That's extremely powerful for for B two Bs and B two C. That's it exactly. So in that in that notification thing, just set up um set up uh, one of your with your sales you know your sales team email and they'll they'll get that straight in their inbox. Um, we've also got an option for um, for kind of advanced users if they you know, if people want to if people want to send directly through to their, their sales automation system, um, we can we can set up a, a kind of CRM output from from lead response as well uh, for those super advanced users. But um, so you know, instead of going to an email inbox, it could go straight to your sales pipeline where you can respond to it through that. Nice, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive as well. This is awesome, man. Thank you. Cool, pleasure. And so yeah, so once you got your once you got your card set up, um, you know, just the final final piece of the puzzle is just to create that tweet, um, uh, create that promoter tweet, and, and attach that that lead card. So um, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail, but it's pretty um, it's pretty straightforward. So if you've created a Twitter campaign before, it's pretty easy. Um, so you know, promoter tweet campaign is the one we want. And uh, so you can, once you've gone through your, you know, naming your campaign, um, and we've chosen some targeting, so maybe we're going for, we're going to go out startup jungle again. So I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and uh, post some of your, 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 your readers. Hmm. Um, we can even put low silver in there, but let's go for startup jungle. Um, so yeah, so um, I, I tend to turn off targeting your own followers and, and, and users like your own followers. Um, and just focus on what we what we really care about, which is getting getting uh, the 
fans of this to, to see this to see this tweet. Question on targeting: uh, Do you, for uh, for testing purposes, do you focus on let's say this one is for startup jungle? Would the next one be just for let's say Twitter, and then maybe run a third one that would be just for um, mix panel or some, do something like that? Yeah, I think um, so. The uh, it kind of depends how much time you've got in a day, but I mean, yeah, the, the optimum thing would be to have you know a bunch of separated targeting groups by different uh, handles that are really closely related. Yeah. Um, so you know, so I think you know if you had uh, we had startup jungle in here, and maybe we could put um, put you in there, Lois. But um, but I think like uh, we wouldn't want something that's um, that's too this distance. So uh, even uh, you know we've retargeted things like TechCrunch and Mashable audiences before, and, and so actually we separate those out to see exactly which of those audiences converts the best for us. So um, you know TechCrunch uh, might have a, a lower CPA for for us than than the Mashable audience. Um, so unless you start separate those two targeting groups out into different campaigns, you won't know which ones of those are working better than the other ones. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with you. It's always better to just do one campaign per because that way you really know what's working and what's not working rather than having to guess at the end of the day. You know, a lot of people do that with Facebook. They do four or five different things on, on the targeting and then they don't know what's working and what's not. You've got to start cutting them off. I'd just rather start with one and then keep moving, you know. That's it, yeah. I mean, and it's there's kind of a there's obviously a balance between how much time how much time you can spend on stuff, but um, but yeah, the optimum would be to create create really granular targeting groups that you can you can play around with. Um, nice. Yeah, so that's so that's kind of so we're targeting interests and followers, and we've got start jungling there. Um, and you, know, you can get you can get more granular than that as well. So you can add in, um, you know, we're going to target United States. Um, and we can maybe even maybe even we think that the males or females can be better, so we can target that. Um, I think for this we probably wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't, wouldn't care. Um, you can target mobile devices and things. Uh, one thing to bear in mind about Twitter ads is um, Twitter's over eighty percent mobile. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have a mobile optimized site, then kind of uh, you, your your audience is really really pretty small. Um, so uh, so make sure you've, you've optimized your site for mobile. What is the uh, tailored audience? Is that the Twitter's version of custom audience? Yeah, I think it, it will become that. I think uh, it's, so. It's uh, it, it is that for um, for a few a few different things. But uh, the, I think um, so. Yeah, it's, it's the opportunity to to either upload at handles or upload um, uh, um, uh, email addresses and be able to target those things. So um, there's a few um, a few options here. Um, oh, that's cool. So I should start doing this stuff now. But yeah, you need to use a you need to you need to use a partner um, to do um, to be able to, to upload these different audiences. Um, but yeah, I think over time it's going to become more self-serve. But right now you can use things like AdRoll to to uh, to set up kind of retargeting lists where you you know people are you can you can send you can start uh, marketing to to email lists that you've you've acquired through your own website. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. Interesting, cool. Um, yeah, and, and keywords is pretty cool. Um, so we, so you know, if, if someone mentions the keyword, uh, I don't know, um, lead cards in a um, in a tweet, you can target um, target that. So we could say any, anything containing using phrase match, anything containing lead cards in a tweet, we're gonna we're gonna target people who have mentioned that in their tweets. Um, so it's another way of targeting interest based um, uh, based stuff. Um, so it's not just who they're following, but also what they're talking about. Would you suggest tag, um, targeting hashtags at all, or kind of stay away from that? Yeah, um, you might have noticed um, we had a, a tweet running in our campaigns earlier, which was uh, so one of our, a couple of tweet, uh, campaigns we were running were targeting conferences. So you know, while there's a conference on, there's loads of marketers who are interacting st with stuff. You know, anyone who mentions that hashtag is going to be a customer of us. So um, uh, so yeah, so so mentioning hashtags is is, is absolutely is absolutely great. Um, you know, you could even, you know, if you're feeling really, uh, if you want some serious volume, you could even try, try advertising on a on a trending topic. It, that, yeah, that that would probably work really well. Cool. And so, yes, yeah, so that's so that's the kind of the basic targeting option. So, I mean, what Twitter is really powerful for is that interest interest targeting. It's, I mean, it's really you can get really quite granular with um, the kind of yeah, the kind of people that that, that might be interested in your content. Um, and like I said, you know, if you're, if you know, we're giving giving away a free fifty dollar ad credit for people 
um, who are interested in starting Twitter ads, if you can find those people who are who are interested in, in doing Twitter ads, so targeting startup jungle um, customers, that's going to be you know that's that's not just a, an advert. That's something that's really useful for them. Um, so you can get quite powerful with that. Um, do you have any suggestions or anything on someone getting started, kind of like a daily spend to, you know, get their feet wet? Um, I tend to do campaigns uh, maybe twenty dollars minimum at a time. Um, I think the a day or for the full campaign. Uh, a day for that campaign. Yeah. Um, uh, and and bear in mind that's going to. You know, you might have that that twenty dollars might be that's per campaign. So for every targeting group that you're at, uh, that you're targeting, you might add another twenty dollars. Um, I think that's it's kind of um, you know people will tell you that in order to get get into Twitter, you need um, you know you need to spend five five k over three months. But I think you know if you you know for if you if you've got some content like this, some tutorials where you've got a bit of a bit of a head start, you definitely don't need to be spending that kind of money to give it a try and test out some campaigns. So I think you know for 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 our ebook campaign we spent you know fifty a hundred dollars and uh, across a couple of days and we worked out that it was it was a really good campaign and that we wanted to invest more budget into it. So I think that's a decent decent amount of budget for an experiment that you want to try out. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Matt. This has been uh, this has been awesome, awesome. Anything else you want to add, or anything anything like that in regards to Twitter lead cards or anything that we might have missed? No, I think we're good. Um, and, and if you wanna, if anyone wants to hit me up for um, for any uh, kind of extra advice, then feel free to to drop me a, a note on my Twitter handle or uh, at Matt Wheeler without the last D, or or just uh, drop us a note on Drift Rock and we'll get in touch and, and help help you guys out. But yeah, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. We appreciate it very much. Um, with that said, guys, if you want to follow uh, Matt. It's at Matt Wheeler without the last T, correct? The last T, yeah. I'll, uh... um, and also driftrock.com is the site. And uh, we will have all that on the show notes as well. And they have a few cool uh, tools and blogs and things like that that you can also go check out. So thank you, Matt. Uh, this is Lowe's with Startup Jungle signing off. Thanks, guys.